So we had a three month shortest downturn in history. Uh, I made that, that call that we had entered a recovery and an upturn. Donald Trump was a bull in a China shop. Everything he touched, he broke. She will be full employment oriented. She's not going to worry about inflation. 네, 세계의 유명한 석학과 구루들에게 평소에 우리가 궁금했던 질문들을 던지고 그들의 생각을 들어보는 시간 글로벌 머니톡 오늘도 어, 시작해 보겠습니다. 오늘도 중앙일보 강남규 기자와 함께합니다. 어서 오십시오. 안녕하세요. 네, 저희 글로벌 머니톡 시간이 이제 회를 거듭할수록 저는 네. 어, 그 인터뷰 때마다 느끼는 게 있어요. 음. 두 가지인데 하나는 때로는 야 역시 역시 좀 생각이 다르네 라는 그렇죠. 생각을 할 때도 음, 있고 네. 사실은 꽤 많은 부분은 음. 아유 저 친구 생각이나 내 생각이나 비슷하구나 아 그렇죠 어, 음. 별거 없네 네, 예. 하는 어, 생각이 들 때도 있는데 저는 오히려 어, 별거 없네 비슷하네 네. 듣던 얘기랑 비슷하네 라는 답 생각 그런 느낌이 드는 생각을 전해 들을 때도 마음이 좀 안도감이 생기는 장점이 아, 있어요 어. 그 기분 압니다 네, 그러니까 내가 알고 있는 것과 저, 저분이 알고 있는 게큰 차이가 없구나 예. 아, 내가 뭔가 좀 놓치고 있는 게 아직은 많지 않구나 라는 오히려 안도감이 예. 어, 그러니까 그 대목에서 <웃음> 그 대목에서 잠시 이제 한 거의 기자 생활 제가 27년 차인데 예. 27년 차의 절반 이상을 이제 글로벌 이카라미를 담당을 하고 있습니다 음. 근데 그때마다 그 한국의 경제 전문가나 기업인 그 다음에 펀드 매니저들이 곧잘 저한테 질문을 해요 음. 외국 사람들은 도대체 어떻게 생각해 뭘 고민해 음. 라는 질문을 할 때마다 음. 그런 얘기를 사실은 퉁명스럽게 제가 좀 그런 부분을 좀 까칠하죠 음. 퉁명스럽게 이렇게 얘기를 해 줍니다 아니 글로벌 말로만 글로벌화에 대해서 얘기하지 말고 마인드도 글로벌화 생각을 해 봐라 음. 실제로 고민의 내용의 100가지 중에서 아흔 아홉 가지 같아요. 그들의 고민과 그들의 어, 생각과. 그들과 죄송합니다. 우리, 그들의 우리가 모르는 건 그들도 모르고. 어, 우리가 모르는 건 그들도 모르고 <웃음> 같이 문제를 어, 그러니까 어떤 뭐라 해결책 대답을 발견해가는 과정. 네. 저는 사실 글로벌 머니톡스는 음. 국내 이 우리 중앙일보 독자나 아니면 3프로의 구독자 모든 분들에게. 음. 어, 그러니까 어떤 외국인이니까 뭔가 다를 것이 있을 음. 것이다 라는 그런 그런 호기심도 이제 뭐 물론 네. 필요합니다만 음. 사실은 자기가 가지고 있는 경제적 그 식견 음. 아니면 난리지 이런 것을 서로 견주어 보는 자리 네. 스스로 그런 자리 이길 소망합니다 사실은 그러게요 그래서 저도 태어나서 벤츠라고 하는 자동차 브랜드를 처음 운전해 봤던 기억이 있는데 네. 운전하고 나서 비슷한 생각이 진짜 들었어요. 진짜 좋아요? 난한 번도 안 해봐가지고. 조금 다른 느낌이긴 한데 네. 어? 큰 차이는 없네. 아, 어, 그렇죠. 어, 그러니까 뭐 아. 외제차도 별거 없네. 그렇죠. 하는 느낌도 음. 가졌던 기억이 있어요. 네. 물론 이제 세세하게 다르고 음흠. 뭔가 이렇게 쫙 쪼이는 느낌이 좀 있긴 있었는데 아, 오케이. 어쨌든 음. 음. 그냥 그런 느낌이 글로벌 머니톡에서도 들고 있다. 자, 오늘은, 오늘의 초대 손님은 어, 미국의 디시즌 이코노믹스라고 하는 연구기관의 대표 인 엘란 사이나이라는 분입니다. 네. 이분은 어떤 분입니까? 사이나이. 아마 눈치 빠른 분은 짐작하셨을 겁니다. 우리 그 이스라엘의 옆에 있는 시나이 반도, 영토 분쟁 지역 중에 하나입니다. 아, 거기 그 지명을 딴 이름이에요? 그렇죠. 유태인입니다. 유태인입니까? 아. 아, 아 모든 음모, 월가의 음모의 소산이라고, 아, 저, 어, 중심이라고 하는 월, 저기 뭐냐, 유태인. 그러나 음, 사실은 음. 또 여, 여러 가지 그 오해와 과정은 많습니다. 음, 이분이 몸 담고 있는 디시즌 이코노믹스라고 하는 곳이 어떤 곳이에요? 정확하게 말하면 은 미국의 CEO. 음. 그 다음에 아, 글로벌 기업의 CEO, 그 다음에 페드, 그 다음에 뭐랄까 재무부 겨, 경제정책 담당자들에게 경기 예측을 해서 그 패키지를 파는 회사입니다. 경기 아. 경기 분석과 예측을 해서 그걸로 먹고 사는 회사. 그러니까 대중들을 상대로 하는 게 아니라 돈 주고 물어볼 만한. 아 그렇죠. 어, 그래서 가치가 있다고 생각되는. 월스트리트 저널이 2000년대 들어서서 매년 이제 그 어떤 경기 예측에 이카나미스트들 경기 예측의 정확도를 평가하고 그러지 않습니까? 우리나라 음. 경제들도 곧잘 그런 일을 하는데. 그래서 그 평가에서 한때 3대 경기 예측가로 꼽히고 음. 어, 상당히 정확한 그 다음에 어, 오늘 우리 그 어, 구독자분들 독자분들이 
들어보시면 알겠지만 두루뭉술하지 않습니다. 이 사람은 정확하게 음. 아주 또 저기 뭐 자기만의 예측을 분명히 제시합니다. 기대해도 음. 좋다라고 저는 확신합니다. 그러니까 평소에 유료 콘텐츠를 팔던 습관이 아, 그렇죠. 음. 그러니까 뭔가 두루뭉술하게 얘기해도 아, 예. 공짜 인터뷰라면 뭐 그럴 만하구나 싶은데 돈 내고 음. 인터뷰에서 네. 이렇게 두루뭉술하게 말하면 예. 고객들 싫어하잖아요. 아, 그렇죠. 자기 설명입니다. <웃음> 알겠습니다. 그럼 인터뷰를 어, 연결이 된것 같으니까 인터뷰를 좀 진행해 보겠습니다. Good morning. It's early here. 어, 지금 시각이 미국의 아, 이른 아침이라는 거 알고 있습니다. 이른 아침인데도 인터뷰에 대해서 너무 감사드리고요. 아, 그런데 지금 어, 헤어스타일이 굉장히 현자 같은데 평소 제, 저와 인터뷰할 때 모습과 다르, 달라 보입니다. Well, what's, what happened was I went into isolation I know, totally. in, in March, and uh, mm -hmm. so the hair grows, mm -hmm. and I decided to leave it alone because I save a lot of money by not getting to cut a lot. So it's <laughs> okay. The color, the color, it just came out this color, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the color when I was a kind of a teenager. My, my hair was kind of blonde. Mm -hmm. so it was kind of blonde with a little white in it. That's the way it is. So I do look different, yes. 예, 사이나이 박사께서는 올해 2021년에 음, 미국 경제, 미국 경제는 어떻게 될 걸로 예상하시는지 전반적인 어, 예상을 좀 전해 주시겠어요? It's going to be a, a fourth quarter of a fourth quarter of the United States. Slow first half, strong second half. Uh, and strong momentum going into 2022. Slow first half, strong second half. Fourth quarter 2021 over 2020, we're estimating 4.7%. That's way above trend. That's mm -hmm. a strong year. And in 2022, we're estimating about 4%. So, like other shocks in history, you know, I, I've simulated them in. Our big model of the U.S. economy, you know, a shock comes from outside by definition. External shock hits the economy. It can be can be a war. It can be oil prices going way up. It can be strikes, and the economy shakes and shudders. And we didn't just shake and shudder in the U.S. and world in this past 2020. The world economy collapsed. Was a depression virtually everywhere in the first half. Uh, then there's a big bounce up uh, after the shock. Now this shock is not over because it's still going on. The illness is still going on, so it's 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 lingered. Uh, it had a lot of after effects, but there's a big bounce up. We saw that in the third quarter. Then it settles down, bounces around, and there's a kind of a, a an average rate of growth. And uh, after a shock, uh, a negative shock, if nothing else bad happens, what we see in history is a bounce up and sustained growth after a negative shock. So what I've just given you is a picture of that. It's just magnified. So uh, that's recovery and expansion seen for the U.S. economy. Uh, I think. When we look around the world and the policy settings of other countries, what you see everywhere is really easy monetary policy. So many parts of the world, zero or negative interest rates, uh, quantitative easing of one kind or another. What you see is fiscal stimulus. The, the economy has to do better because of that alone. Uh, Japan just either passed or is about to pass a 14 trillion yen fiscal stimulus. That's, that's a very big percent of the Japanese economy. I think South Korea has done fiscal stimulus as well. Yeah. Uh, Germany and Europe is as well. So easy money and fiscal stimulus underlies all economies in the world. Uh, the illness is still hurting, but it's going to fade over time. The net result should be by the second half for the U.S., a very, very good economy 
and I think for for the world as well, for the world economy as well. 요즘 백신이 코로나 백신이 보급 중인 걸로 알고 있습니다. 그런데 어떻게 지금 백신이 효과를 내 어, 효과를 내고 있는 것으로 알려지고 있는데 만약에 효, 기대했던 효과가 나타나지 않으면은 경제에 어떤 충격이 발생할 수 있을까요? So let, let, I think your question goes to what can go wrong with this picture stemming from the illness, the pandemic. As we go through the year, millions of people in the U.S. and outside the U.S. will get immunity. Uh, we don't know how long the immunity lasts, but the public health people say it, it, it will last with two doses of the vaccine. There'll be more vaccines. Uh, th that's a plus. But suppose we run into a problem like we already have, mutants of the mm -hmm. basic COVID-19 that are not any more lethal but seem to be, they say, transmitted faster uh, and, and take down more people faster than the original COVID-19. The pace of vaccinations will be there and whether the vaccinations will cover these new uh, mutant viruses. The public health officials say the vaccines will cover that. Depression of 2020, it was only three months. February was the peak. And May, we think, was the beginning of the recovery. So we had a three-month shortest downturn in history in the United States. We had a five-week equity bear market at about the same time, shortest in history. Uh, and then we had recovery and a new bull market. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have, on a worsening uh, illness, failure of vaccinations, uh, in the United States, we have another recession, double dip recession, we call it, or the alphabet letter W, alphabet letter W. So the W has that first, that, that first collapse, then a bounce up, which we've had. And then you go down and we would have negative real GDP, rising unemployment in the first half of the year, uh, depending on uh, the course of the cause and the responses policy-wise, uh, I think this one would last much longer. It wouldn't be as easy to fight it because we've already injected so much monetary and fiscal stimulus. Where would we get more? That would be terrible if it, if it happened again, but it's certainly possible. Our odds on this kind of scenario is downside risk, 15%. I'm worried about it. 무엇부터 공부해야 될지 어떤 자료와 정보를 봐야 되는지 아직도 헷갈리시나요? 포스트 코로나 시대에 방황하는 20대부터 본업에서도 투자에서도 성과를 내고 싶은 30대 노후를 준비하는 40대 50대까지 주식 투자의 세계에 입문하신 분들을 위해서 3프로TV가 준비했습니다. 3프로TV 주식대학 봄학기 초보 투자자들의 멘토 염블리의 친절한 주식 기초 교육 어떤 기업이 돈을 잘 벌고 있는지 확인하는 법부터 증권사 리포트, 기술적 분석을 통해서 수익을 내는 법까지 염블리, 염승원 부장과 함께 한 발자국씩 나아가면서 평생 투자의 기초를 탄탄하게 다지는 시간이 될 겁니다. 3프로TV가 염블리의 친절한 주식 기초 교육과 함께 여러분의 성공 투자를 응원하겠습니다. 영상 아래 링크를 통해서 강의를 신청하실 수 있습니다. 알람! 어, 미국 증시뿐만 아니라 글로벌 증시가 지금 호황인데 일부 전문가들은 버블이다라고 지적을 하고 있습니다. 근데 아까 그 경제 분석, 실물 경제 분석 예측, 분석과 예측을 보면 상당히 좋은 걸로 좋을 것으로 보고 있는데 그렇다면 라 주가와 실물 경제 간극이 벌어져 있는데 조만간 이게 좁혀질 것이라고 본, 보고 계시는 건가요? No, it's, we, it, it's not a bubble. Uh, there are some extraordinarily high PE ratios in some of the technology stocks, but those are companies that are essentially taking over the world. 2021 is a transition year. It's, I call it the year of the vaccine. Well, you know, in, in Asia, when you have a new year and 
certain countries, they call it the year of the dragon, the year of this. <laughs> so I call this the year of the vaccine. Last year was the year of the pandemic. Uh, this, uh, this phenomenon, this unusual event has run the world. Economies, markets, policy, our lives. And as part of it, look how we're communicating and look at how good this technology is. Uh, I think after this is over, companies, of course, are going to ask about how they spend money in terms of pursuing profits and stock price appreciation. And they're not going to travel all over the world. They're going to use Zoom or something like it. Uh, this way of communicating will be with us forever. Uh, so we'll have a, a much more normal situation. But uh, the pre-pandemic, that's in 2022 and beyond. But it will be not anything like we used to have. It won't be anything like now. It'll be a lot, lot better. Is Zoom uh, is, is, a, is a bubble. It's, a, it's just a prototype example of companies whose prices have gone way up because of this, this view of the future. PE ratio has been out of sight. So it's vulnerable to a lot of volatility. And the phenomenon, the phenomenon is real. What I just described will never go away. Is the company's stock, the Zoom company stock, in a bubble? Well, a P ratio of 900 is a mm -hmm. characteristic of a stock price that's bubble-like. But the phenomenon is real. Mm -hmm. And so it is okay to have that kind of pricing in a world where one looks ahead to growth and where when one discounts price of the stock, you're using interest rates that are zero. Because remember, fundamental asset pricing is future earnings or cash flows discounted by some sort of rates. And the rates all around the world are zero or negative, and they're going to stay that way for several years. So the PE ratios, valuations on fundamental asset pricing are justifiably much higher. So, so I would say we are not in a bubble. And even Zoom with that high PE ratio, I don't think is in a bubble. But what is the right price? Uh, that's very tough. But no, I don't see around the world, given the conditions, ultra easy monetary policy, the picture of future growth that I've laid out for the US and the world here, uh, and the fundamentals of asset pricing that use a discount rate against future cash flows or earnings to get today's appropriate price, high PE ratios are justified, and particularly in the technology area, where we have so many companies all around the world that are changing the way we live, work, play, communicate, do business. It's a whole new world. So the answer is no. I say no on generalized bubble. And of course, people are going to be worried about it. They, the, uh, it's scary. The, 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 the levels of uh, the US stock market to which we've gone when it's so miserable in the here and now of today. I mean, look at what I just said. We're sliding. We have a 15% risk of a double tip recession. The pandemic is awful. Uh, it's awful here in the United States. People are scared. Well, the here and now is, Main Street is bad. We have 11, 12 million we have an army of unemployed people in the United States. They're not coming back to work easily. So it's really scary. Uh, but asset prices, our, our expectation of they look out into the future and the equity market asset prices in the United States are not out of line uh, and certainly generally not in a bubble. Hello. 2008년 전 세계가 글로벌 금융 위기의 불안에 떨고 있을 때에 과감한 예측을 했었죠. 어, 장기적인 주가 상승 국면이 열렸다. 
모든 사람들이 바보 같은 소리 내지는 너무 성급한 예측이지 않는가 했는데 그때 당시 그 예측은 아주 정확하게 맞아 떨어졌습니다. 그 이후에 장기적으로 주가는 올랐습니다. 자 그렇다면 라은 지금 현재 주가 상승을 장기적인 상승의 초입 내지는 뭐 시작 이렇게 보고 보는 볼 수도 있지 않을까요? 어떨까요? 그 반대로 생각할 수도 있고요. Yeah, yes, I do. I think five or six years is is a long time. But I, I go by how what I see in the economy, and and whether the economic upcycle uh, is lasting and will be lasting, and the risks to it, because stock earnings follow that. If the South Korean economy, the U.S. economy, Chinese economy grows. Positively, in macro, in the macro sense, then company earnings are going to rise. Asset prices are based on those future earnings discounted with a particular discount rate and very low interest rates. So I look to see what I see in the economy, and that tells me what to think about equity bull markets. And so what we saw, and it was astonishing to see it back in April. Back in April, because look, look, this thing hit. Really, we realized it in. Well, I first really realized it. I, I February twelfth was after I was in Seoul. When I was in Seoul, I told everybody it's prosperity uh, for the U.S. and the world will do better, and no chance of a recession. Look what happened. It's the first one I've missed in forty years. But you know. It, we, the U.S. was was prosperous, three and a half percent unemployment rate, ten ten year expansion, still plenty of room to go, no inflation, a very agreeably easy monetary policy, the Trump fiscal stimulus was working those tax cuts, uh, and then suddenly, out of the blue, Earth gets hit by another planet, and knocks us out of orbit. Uh, now. When when I mentioned in, in Seoul, I saw more people wearing masks. I say to myself, "Why didn't you realize something new was going on, and we could have an external shock that would ruin that forecast?" Ah, uh -uh. I I was aware of it, but I but it wasn't until I saw somebody who I respect a lot, Paul Tudor Jones on TV, say this could be a big deal. And what made me realize this was a big deal was on February 12th, Nike shut a lot of its stores in China and Starbucks, uh, my favorite place, Starbucks, shut stores in China. That told me China was shutting down. China is the second largest economy in the world. If China is shutting down, that meant that a lot of U.S. companies that do business in China, like Nike and Starbucks, would have a problem. And then they would cut back. And if they cut back, they fire people. They fire people. People don't spend money. That's when it hit me that we could have a recession, February 12th. I'll never forget those two anecdotal reports. And uh, we, February was the peak month. That was the peak. Uh, the bear market began February 19th and uh, lasted five weeks. Now, five weeks later, on March 24, the stock market began to go up. Five weeks, and we've never had a bear market that was only five weeks in history. We've never had a downturn, and this one, the the world was collapsing. Who could think that we were going to be in a new equity uh, bull market? So I looked at the state of the economy, and we had had. Uh, by that time, the CARES Act, that was $3 trillion of fiscal stimulus. The Federal Reserve Chair Powell had taken interest rates quickly to zero, up the quantitative easing, and promised to be easy until we got back to full employment, which was 3.5% February. Um, and uh, if inflation was low. There was a lot of slack in the economy. All of the characteristics at that time are characteristics of the beginning of an up cycle, the beginning of recovery. It's astonishing. How could that be? I asked myself uh, after only uh, a couple of months of the downturn. Well, because 
the fundamentals, macro fundamentals, said it looks like all the other starts of ex recoveries over the past 40 years, uh, I made that, that call that we had entered a recovery and an upturn. And uh, once they, they get going, uh, they're, they're very hard to knock out. And so I said, three to five years, we're into a recovery, uh, sustained and sustainable, which will turn to expansion. And following that is the bull market. If that was the view on the economy, then the equity bull market follows how the economy is going to do. So I made a, uh, a, a call that we had entered a new equity bull market. And I think that happened in the second week of April. And I do believe, because I believe the recovery and expansion will go on for three to five years, that we have a long equity bull market. We have a long equity bull market in the United States in place. I do think it's in China as well, uh, in Japan, South Korea, because the picture of the world economy, I have to say it without some other strange shocks, wars, something strange happens in politics in the United States. Uh, the, the picture, uh, at least on ec the economic cycle, is for a long up cycle in the United States and the same other countries. And that says long equity bull market. 어, 새로 취임한 미국 대통령 바이든의 정책 중에 하나는 이제 기후 변화 협약에 다시 가입하는 즉 친환경 인더스트리를 좀더 어, 부흥시키고자 하는 그런 노력을 하고 있는데요. 그런 정책 방향은 일각에서는 어, 기존의 화석 연료를 기반으로 한 산업을 붕괴시켜서 일자리에 악영향을 줄 거다라는 의견도 있는 것으로 알고 있습니다. 혹시 그런 부작용은 없겠습니까? We, we have... A couple of stages for the uh, coming Biden administration in terms of stimulus and initiatives. Uh, th there is uh, bipartisan support for something called infrastructure, infrastructure spending, typically means roads and highways, buildings. Part of the infrastructure will be things like climate change uh, expenditures. Greening, uh, spending to support the R and D and preventing pandemics and being prepared, and the federal government, as part of those expenditures, will directly employ some of the people who are out of work now. I called that an army of unemployed. We have eleven or. We have put back to work about 11 million people who lost work in just two months, March and April in 2020. But over 23 million people lost work, were, lost work or were let go. Uh, and so there's still 11 million of them that have not come back. Uh, the fiscal stimulus program the first one and this one uh, that I think they will pass by the end of the year is designed to help those people get over uh, this period of unemployment. Uh, but I don't think a lot of them are going to easily come back into the economy despite that fiscal stimulus. And the kind of fiscal stimulus, the climate change, uh, what we need to do, how we need to do it, where, uh, this is a problem for the world economy as well, is, is yet to be defined. That takes time to figure out. Uh, so I have no illusions. I think we will have a major unemployment problem in the United States for quite some time with a sticky high unemployment rate. It will not come down easily. Now, one reason is that the private sector companies uh, are not going to rush to hire people back. That's not how they run their businesses. They, they wanna maximize profits, shareholder value. And so they're, they do better if they don't bring people back uh, because they save on costs. 
and technology is such that technology is replacing people. And then we are redoing almost everything we do. Will the airline industry ever be the same? Will I ever go to Asia again? Well, I want to go to Asia again. But will I go to Asia in three and a half days, fly there, uh, quickly go to Seoul, go to Japan, turn around and fly back in three and a half days? It's a tough trip, especially as you get older. And it's very expensive. When I might be able to do what I do this way, and will my company or any company send their people around the world this way? Will the diplomats uh, have a meeting to discuss climate change and all fly somewhere? Mm-hmm. Will Davos, will everybody from all over fly to Davos, Switzerland's fun? Uh, I don't think so because it's not cost effective. Uh, and so the travel industry will never be the same and they will never employ as many people as they did before, they'll be part of unemployed, sticky high unemployment rate, and it will be a big social problem for the United States. It will be a big social problem, sticky high unemployment rate. 매달 월급처럼 따박따박 배당을 받는 ETF, 그리고 1년 사이에 10배가 오른 테슬라, 미국 시장에 상장을 준비하는 쿠팡까지, 소식은 많이 들리지만 미국 주식 투자를 시작하기에 아직은 어색하신가요? 포스트 코로나 시대에 방황하는 20대부터 본업에서도 투자에서도 성과를 내고 싶은 30대 노후를 준비하는 40대 50대까지 미국 주식의 세계에 입문하신 분들을 위해서 3프로TV가 준비했습니다. 3프로TV 주식대학 봄학기 미국 주식에 미치다 장우석과 이학령의 미국 주식 완전 정복 미국 시장의 제도, 특징, 세금부터 기업의 가치 분석, 포트폴리오, 유망 종목까지 장우석 본부장, 이항영 대표와 함께 한 발자국씩 나아가면서 평생 투자의 기초를 탄탄하게 다지는 시간이 될 겁니다. 3프로TV가 미주미 미국 주식 완전 정보 클래스와 함께 여러분의 성공 투자를 응원합니다. 영상 아래 링크를 통해서 강의를 신청하실 수 있습니다. 앨런, 아, 이건 좀 어, 웃자고 드리는 질문인데 사실 그 제니 앨런 어, 재무장관은 걸출한 경제학자죠. 그리고 페드 의장까지 지냈습니다. 음. 반대로 어, 제롬 파월 현 페드 의장은 경제학을 공부하지 않았고요. 그렇다면 은 바이든 행정부에서 경제정책을 결정을 할때 누가 더 주도권을 행사할 수 있을까요? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, one of the I think pluses of the president-elect's appointments was Janet Yellen as Treasury Secretary. She was chairperson of the Federal Reserve for four years. She was on the Federal Reserve for quite some time. And our Federal Reserve has a dual objective, as you know, price stability and full employment. Price stability, when she was there, was defined as 2% inflation. And the thinking at the Federal Reserve at that time was, as the unemployment rate comes down, inflation goes up, the so-called Phillips curve. My research always said the Phillips curve didn't exist, and the policymakers should not do that. But that's what they did. At the Federal Reserve, she had to follow, achieve 2% inflation, and she could not reveal who I know Janet Yellen to be. She's a full employment maven. You know, maven, this is a policymaker now in the political side of the ledger, no longer with, no longer having to worry about 2% inflation that really wants full employment. Her, her DNA is that way. She was trained by Jim Tobin. What, probably the most liberal, what, you know, as, as you know, a giant of our profession. I, I knew Jim, and he grew up in, uh, I think, Indiana, poor. I grew up in Detroit. And, you know, when you see all those unemployed people in the business cycle and what that does to them, their psychology, their, their, their way of life, to their family, you never forget it. 
She was trained by Jim. She is going to work very hard to achieve full employment. So I call her a full employment maven. Now, how about Chair Powell? Chair Powell is not an academic economist. He's a non-economist. And what has he done since this whole thing hit? He has said, we've got to get back to full employment. Back to full employment, that was 3.5%. And he says it again and again and again. It wasn't the fault of the American people that this happened. It was a natural disaster. In addition, the Federal Reserve, under the direction of Chair Powell, has abandoned the Phillips curve. That happened this past year. Because after all these years of low unemployment, it's in the U.S., it's true in South Korea, it's true in Japan, low unemployment, is there any inflation? No, it doesn't work. So our Federal Reserve gave that up. They no longer think that when you get the unemployment rate down, inflation is automatically going to go up. That's a myth. I always thought it was a myth. My work always said, and I would tell them that. And Janet Yellen, I know her when she was, I knew her before. Uh, she uh, went to Washington. She became chair of the Council of Economic Advisors in the Clinton administration. I would come and visit and see her. Uh, we know each other's work. We know each other on a personal and professional basis. She was a Phillips Curve adherent. She believed in it. I don't think she does now. So the two of them, Paul, a member of the, I believe, Republican Party, appointed by a Republican president, and uh, Janet Yellen, are completely in sync completely in sync on achieving full employment. So I call them both full employment mavens. On the fiscal side, Janet is in a position to spearhead fiscal policy and advise the president on fiscal policy. She will be full employment oriented. She's not going to worry about inflation. On the Federal Reserve side, Chair Powell has vowed and pledged, as has, has the Federal Reserve, to get us back to full employment. And they're no longer worried about inflation as a consequence. Put the two together, they're bonded. They're bonded. They will get along beautifully. And the style, the personal style of both of them is wonderful as policymakers. No huge ego involvement. They just care about the country. Janet Yellen is a very liberal Democrat, very liberal Democrat societally. So she will go all out to keep that get that unemployment rate as low as possible so all <laughs> Americans can share in prosperity. And Chair Powell will do exactly the same thing. Biden 대통령이 취임한 지 얼마 안 됐기 때문에 어, 금융시장을 전망하려는 분들은 미국의 정책이 어떻게 바뀔지에 대해서 많은 고민들이 있는 것 같습니다. 미국의 이번에 집권한 민주당에는 이른바 급진 진보주의자라고도 설명할 수 있는 그런 분들이 꽤 있어요. 뭐 오카시오 코르테스, 뭐 엘리자베스 워런 이런 분들인데 그분들이 주장하는 정책들, 뭐 예를 들면 뭐그 기업에 세금을 올린다든가 하는 그런 정책들이 구현이 될 거라고 보십니까? 월가에서는 좀 두려워하는 그런 정책 변화일 텐데요. Yeah, you're talking about uh, the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. And the question comes up very often because the Democrat, Joe Biden, was elected. Uh, will the progressive wing of the party uh, gain more importance or dominate in policy? Uh, and so far, uh, what we've seen from President-elect Biden on his appointments uh, don't suggest that he will lean far left. He is a centrist by nature. And my reading of, the, of America is we are center right and center left. And he's a little center left, but not far left. So I think Senator Warren, who's a brilliant, brilliant senator, was a fine candidate. Uh, I, I think she's terrific. I think she'll stay in the Senate. 
and the very liberal strong view she has uh, will be expressed. So far, though, uh, President like Biden's appointments look very centrist and very much people who are familiar with the workings of Washington. The Democrats, I think, would prefer to have Senator Warren in the Senate work better for them. So the b- bottom line is a judgment on the president, really, on the president-elect, that he's going to stay in the center and truly reach out and try to be bipartisan. He's good at that. That's a skill set that he has, having been in Congress for all those years. So my judgment on, on President Biden, I'm independent politically. Uh, I have strong societal views. The economy is the economy that's different from societal views. So, societal views are very different from looking at the economy objectively. And uh, this guy, uh, as, as I read him in his history, uh, is by nature a centrist. And he's just, he will not, and he will, and not only that, I think he senses that the American people are not far left, they're not far right. Uh, America really is more centrist than it looks like to a lot of foreign observers of the U.S. And I think he's, he's going to straddle that. We'll see, but that's my opinion on that one. Yeah, one more question I'll give you. Then, 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 적극적으로 추진할 걸로 보십니까? Your question is about our existing uh, tax rates and the system of uh, tax changes, which were changed uh, in the Trump administration and very quickly, 2017, within one year, changes in the tax code, which were sizable, sizable fiscal stimulus through taxes, came out of the administration and Congress. Probably the fastest uh, tax program ever. Uh, the, the, the tax changes are widely read to be for uh, corporations and for the, for the rich. Not totally so. There was a lot of tax reform in there. Those tax rates for individuals, the reduction in the individual tax rates, uh, some of the changes which really reduced some of the tax subsidies and loopholes, They're in law to 2025. That's the law that was passed. The corporate tax rate reduction, which took our our tax rate uh, to a level that was more consistent with what other countries were doing, and then some, 21% as a statutory corporate tax rate. Those tax cuts are there for individuals to 2025, And for corporations, the 21% statutory rate uh, permanently. The president and Congress could suggest other changes to the tax code. And I think they will. But I think it's going to come after we make more progress on the pandemic. And we're well on the road going back to full employment. I don't think Treasury Secretary Yellen I would not suggest that at a 6% unemployment rate, we raise taxes. I might suggest that we raise taxes on the very rich, on billionaires. I might suggest that we close some of the corporate tax loopholes and have a, a minimum tax so that corporations don't get away with paying no tax. I might suggest a wealth tax. Well, th- what I'm saying is I believe there will be suggestions of tax changes, but we won't overturn what's there. There'll be other tax changes that will be aimed at getting at the problem of inequality, of inequality. Uh, and those would not be enough to derail the kind of expansion that I see. You, you need widespread increases in taxes to do that. So I don't think we can, we can politically won't be able to overturn what's already been passed. Trump got that in. That is a legacy of Donald Trump. Deregulation takes a while to re-regulate all the things he deregulated. That actually helped the business expansion. And the tax cuts definitely helped.
uh, my work definitely helped. And I don't think those get changed, certainly not the tax cuts. Deregulation to executive uh, order can, a lot of re-regulation can occur. Uh, President Biden, after inauguration, can rejoin uh, the, the world on climate change if they'll accept the United States. We can reinvigorate G7, which Donald Trump virtually destroyed. Uh, Donald Trump was a bull in a china shop. Everything he touched, he broke. Biden has to pick up the pieces now. Look at all the work he's got to do internationally. Uh, climate change, the Paris Agreement, uh, Iraq, all that. Wow. Uh, but I think we won't overturn the taxes, but we will get new taxes. Now, when might they do that? Not until the economy is doing a lot better. Uh, they'll use federal government spending in a Keynesian way to lift the economy through initiatives like climate change, greening, infrastructure, spending. Uh, that will be what the Biden administration will propose. Janet Yellen will spearhead in the name of getting lower unemployment and recovering from the pandemic. And then if things get better, we will see attempts to change the tax code. Uh, and then we'll have a big debate in this country over that. 네, 어, 앨런 사이나이 박사와 인터뷰는 이쯤에서 좀 마무리를 하고요. 어, 강 기자님, 어, 이분 굉장히 낙관적인 분이군요. 아, 그렇죠. 근데 자기는 결코 낙관적이지 음. 않다라고 얘기를 해요. 음. 어, 평소에 어, 굉장히 낙관적으로 나는 인터뷰 할때 낙관적인 말을 해요. 그러면 아, 굉장히 낙관적으로 보는 것 같다. 그렇지 않고 자기는 어. 그냥 분석의 결과를 얘기할 뿐이다. 그 말은 그 아까도 인터뷰 중간에 잠깐 나왔는데, 음. 어, 우리는 지금 팬데믹 이후에 코로나 위기가 언제쯤 끝날 거냐 네. 혹은 이러다가 다시 WD 몰 거냐 네. 어, 언제 일상으로 돌아가고 돌아갈 수 있겠냐 약간 답답한 마음으로 주로 질문을 하는데 네. 이분은 끝났어 이 바보야 <웃음> <웃음> 그말 듣고 사실 웃음이 <웃음> 터져 나오려는데 겨우 참았습니다 사실은 그러, 그러네요 네. 예. 미국의 역사, 미국의 침체 역사상 가장 음. 짧은 음, 침체일 것이다 팬데믹 침체가 네. 그런 말을 했습니다. 사실 그 지금 그런 의미에서 사실 증시가 반응하고 있는 걸 보면은 참 현명한 거죠. 현명한 거죠 음, 시장이. 음. 그러나 여기서 이제 어차피 우리 이제 어떤 뭐랄까 경제 분석은 누구나 경제 분석과 예측은 누구나 틀릴 수 있다라는 기 때문에 음. 어 그저 낙관적인 시각 가운데 한 분의 말. 음. 이라고 일단 좀 새겨들을 필요는 있을 것 같아요. 근데 이분이 왜 빨리 끝났고 끝날 것이다 라고 본 건가요? 이게 그 인터뷰 내용 중에서 가장 흥미롭게 저한테 제 귀에는 흥미롭게 들렸던 게 뭐냐면 가장 공격적인 경기 부양. 예전에 안 썼던 예. 어, 중앙은행과 정부의 재정 정책 통화 정책. 그렇죠. 음. 그 공격적인 경기 부양과 돈 풀기 음. 이 자체 그리고 사실 어, 가장 중요한 게 경제 위기 전통적인 경제 위기가 위기와는 달리 팬데믹 위기는 음. 경제 생산 능력이나 음흠. 고용의 함수 이런 거에 대한 어떤 그그 어떤 뭐랄까 장기적인 변화가 발생한 건 아니거든요. 음, 잠깐 그러니까 충격을, 그, 충격을, 못 잠깐 받은, 충격을 거죠. 받은 거죠. 외계인 침공한 거지. 어, 그렇죠. <웃음> 그러니까 경제 외적인 변수에 의해서 네. 기존의 경제의 어, 어, 흐름과 시스템과 흐름이 어, 흔들린 거죠. 아. 그런 외생 변수 때문에 발생한 위기는 전쟁이라든지 전염병 이런 것은 생각보다 빠르게 회복했다라는 게 역사적인 경험이거든요. 음. 제가 이제 아까 직접적으로 그걸 묻고 다부지게 달라붙지는 않았습니다만은 음. 앨런 사이나이 박사가 사실 그런 역사적 경험을 바탕으로 지금 현재 예측 모델링을 하고 있지 않는가 그런 생각을 음. 했습니다. 사실 지나고 나니까 이번에도 유리 위기의 본질이. 네. 과연 불경기였던 거냐 네. 아니면 전쟁이었던 거냐 예. 둘다 나쁜 이벤트이긴 하지만 네. 불경기와 전쟁은 원인도 다르고 극복 방법도 다르고 후유증도 다르잖아요 그쵸. 어, 그 전쟁은 또 끝나고 나면 오히려 더 빨리 복구도 되고 하니까 예, 예. 오히려 전쟁 쪽에 가까웠던 게 아닌가 우리는 뭔가 불경기가 오나 이렇게 이제 걱정을 했는데 사실 많은 경제 전문가들이 제가 이제 음. 인터뷰를 할때좀 답답함을 느꼈던 건데 많은 경제 전문가들이 과거의 침체와 지금의 침체를 단순 비교를 해요. 음. 
어, 물론 그 설명하고 그러니까 경제도 하나의 내러티브니까 설명하고 스토리를 전개하는 데 필요한 요소일 수는 있어요 과거에 그러나 사실은 우리가 경험한 그 20세기 침체는 대부분 경제 내적인 요인 내부의 요인 때문에 불균형이라든지 음. 아니면 은 과잉이라든지 과잉이라든지 그런 내적인 요인에서 발생한 거거든요 그러나 이번 거는 정말 전형적으로 외부 요인에 의해서 그렇죠. 음. 네, 그래서 우주인이 침공했다 어, 사실 어쩌면 은 근대 경제와 비교를 해야 되지 않을까 17세기 10, 아니, 죄송합니다 18세기 19세기 초에 그때는 지금과 경제 상황이 달랐어요? 그때는 흉년 그 다음에 전쟁 아, 그런. 어, 그런 외적인 변수에서 경제 불황이랄까 침체 음. 내지는 시스템의 어떤 그 궤도 이탈이 발생을 했던 경우가 잦았죠 음. 네. 그러니까 뭔가 이제 과잉에 의해서 생긴 것은 그게 다 제거되고 네. 해소될 때까지 시간이 많이 필요한데 어, 그렇죠 인간이 만들어낸 경제 시스템은 음. 자가 치유 능력이 있다고 라 얘기하지만 그것까지 가는데 상당한 비용과 음, 들어가는데 시간이 들어가죠 음. 그러니까 쉽게 말하면 성인병 낫고 날씬해지는 건 시간이 많이 걸리고 쉽지 않은데 그죠 차라리 어디 뭐 맹장염 걸린 건 역시 비위의 달인이에요 어, 한 이틀 만에 된다는 거야 그게 그죠? 그렇죠 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 우리 하는 말로 어른들 하는 말로 <웃음> 쭉 재면 되는 거죠 어, 그러니 음. 이번에는 그냥 맹장염 같은 거였다 아 예. 음. 그런 것일 수 있다 라고 어, 오늘 음. 이 알라사이나이 박사도 음. 그래서 네. 빨리 회복이 되는 거니까 그걸 바탕으로 우리의 전망을 해야 될것 같다는 비교적 뭐 이럴 수도 있고 저럴 수도 있다가 아니라 네 그렇죠 음, 여러분들 알겠습니다. 마, 어투만큼은 감명하지 않습니까 음, 네. 그렇다고 저희가 이걸 다뭐 믿고 신뢰하는 건 아니고 네. 어, 아까 얘기했지만은 이런, 여기, 이런 음, 얘기하는 분도 있다 우리 구독자 음. 그 다음에 독자 분들의 개인적인 판단과 그것도 예. 굉장히 정확하고 좋을 수 있습니다 음. 그와 견조 보는 자리라는 것을 다시 한번 말씀드리고 싶습니다 네 글로벌 네, 모니터 오늘 순서는 여기서 마무리하겠습니다. 강 기자님도 고생하셨어요. 아, 감사합니다. 네. 아, 재밌어요, 나날이. <웃음> <웃음>